Hey there, do-it-yourself technicians. Today, I want to talk to you about my lessons learnt from doing a four-hour live stream with hand-me-down equipment. I've run a few live streams in the last several months, starting with a couple of internal ones for the school community, and then two this week of Lawn Bowls games, culminating in a four-hour live stream Friday night. So I thought I'd share some of my thoughts about do's, don'ts, and improvements. I've done this basically with equipment I already had. That said, I have a lot of equipment, but basically all of it is hand-me-down stuff. Stuff I've just collected over time, usually given to me by people who don't want it anymore. Here's a photo of basically everything loaded into an old road case that I'd collected along the way as well. This makes it really easy to transport, as it fits just into the boot of my car. Previous to this, I was lugging it around in three separate backpacks, and that didn't work very well. The case is on wheels, so once I close it up, I can flip it onto its side and push it to wherever it needs to be, although it doesn't go very well over rough terrain. It also serves as a workspace once I set up, which is kind of handy. The hub of it all is this top-of-the-line $4,000 gaming laptop, an Asus Republic of Gamers Black Flag Edition from 2013. I was given it a year or so by a colleague from work, it had been her brother's before he passed, and over time they'd lost the power cord and it was just sitting in a cupboard gathering dust. So she thought I might be able to use it. Yes, I have. After finding and buying a new power supply for it, which I think weighs more than my normal laptop. This thing is a beast. In fact, it's known as the beast around our house. The kids use it for gaming as well at times. The machine works well and is still reasonably specced despite being over eight years old. That said, most modern computers can probably handle a two or three camera live stream. I'm running Windows 11 beta on it, which is probably not ideal, but it's just how it evolved. The streaming software I'm using is OBS Studio, a free and open source project which has loads of plugins and is really, really flexible and fairly easy to use. For cameras, I'm using an old iPhone 7 and an old iPhone 6S Plus with a cracked screen. Each phone also has its own battery backup because I knew these old phone batteries wouldn't cope with the length of a game. They just happened to be what I had lying around. I also found this Zoom Q2 HD, which somebody gave me because they were throwing it out. The iPhones were perched on little tripods on top of shelter sheds at either end of the bowling green. The Q2 HD was mounted on a regular tripod sitting in front of me so I could pan it backwards and forwards to see what I needed to see. One iPhone was running Elgato Epoch Cam, which I did a video about earlier, but I found when I tried to set the second one up that you can't run two cameras using that software into one OBS Studio. But what I did find is a website called obs.ninja that basically using Safari on an iPhone turns the camera into a web-based camera. Really simple. And I did all of this on the fly during the Tuesday night live stream that I did. It was a game where my dad was playing Paul Dodd in the round of 16 of the Lilydale Bowling Club Club Championships. If you watch the video up here or in the comments below, you'll see I start with the Q2 HD from the sidelines. Then I get the Epoch camera added in at about the 13 minute mark and then the OBS Ninja camera at the other end, about the 30 minute mark. Then I was able to set up picture in picture, so you could see the bowl being delivered up in the top corner and the main head in the main screen. Somewhere around the one hour mark, I added the scoreboard, which I'd pre-set up earlier. Several people really loved it and it seemed to work great. With all of these lessons learned, I headed into a Friday night Premier League game between us, Lilydale Bowling Club, and Clayton. The setup was basically the same, although I had moved a little further up the green towards the middle, because we knew there'd be a much bigger crowd. I started setting up nearly two hours before the game started, firstly by running power and ethernet from the clubhouse out to my spot. This will get better when the area that I'm actually in turns into a new bar location and outdoor seating area, but for now, we do what we can. The network cable connects into a Wi-Fi router so that the iPhones can beam the signal back. The laptop connects the signal, processes it, and pushes it out through a wired connection back out to the club's NBN. 
the evening was really blustery and freezing. So it wasn't great for bowls, and as it turned out, not for live streaming either. If you're interested, you can see the whole stream linked here or in the description below. Some of the lessons I learned were, when it's windy, you have to gaff tape everything down. I gaff taped the tripods to the top of the shelter shed so that the phones didn't blow off. Even my standard laptop nearly blew off the desk a couple of times. Four hours of streaming plus the setup beforehand is a long time for iPhones to have the screen, camera and Wi-Fi going. When the low battery monitor kicks in, the quality seems to drop and the phone lags way, way behind for some reason. Even with the battery pack, one of the cameras didn't make it to the end. I ended up switching to the widescreen view and putting my other laptop up on the top of the shelter shed and using it as a power supply for the phone for the last half hour or so of the match. The other phone was literally at 1% and the battery pack was flat by the time we finished and started to back up. Three or four battery packs will be needed next time so that I can rotate them around halfway through and make sure the phones stay topped up. Either that or we'll find a way to hardwire them in. Lesson three, commentators really make the game for people watching. Ideally, two of them. I'm not a great commentator at all, and especially when I'm trying to do the camera switching and troubleshooting, I'm not really much good at all. The ideal setup would be a video director and two dedicated commentators. I think the club might need better internet, although it worked perfectly on the Tuesday night. We may need a dedicated internet just for the stream. Possibly I'll even try a 4 or 5G connection, because at a couple of points we completely ran out of bandwidth and the stream just ground to a halt. Having music playing that is picked up by the microphones will cause Facebook and or YouTube to give you copyright strikes and possibly block your stream. Next time, we need to find a way to play the music that isn't picked up by the microphones. I need a better microphone and commentary system. We had a single shared microphone, which didn't make it terribly inviting for anyone who might have been interested in sitting down for a chat. And from the chat, I know that watching in silence is not much fun at all. Facebook has a time limit for live streams. This should be eight hours if you're streaming from a computer, but for some reason, we got cut off after just four, which is the limit for mobile devices. So I'll have to look into that but it was really annoying because I didn't even know this existed and I was just in the throes of wrapping everything up and giving the overall scores when it just cut out completely and said, your stream has now ended. And it's like, oh, thanks for letting me know. But it was all a learning experience. Having Ethernet-based PTZ, Pan, Tilt and Zoom cameras would be really useful about probably 20% of the time when the ends are really short so you can zoom right in or when the jack comes back in or near the ditch so you can tilt down and be able to see that as well. These cameras would also be wired in, which would be awesome. Unfortunately, they're in the $1,000 to $5,000 each range and also take a lot more skill to operate. In the end, it's going to come down to a return on investment question for the board of the club. How much do they want to invest and what do they think the return will be? There's lots that we can do to improve it, but is it actually financially viable? watch this space for more info. All in all, I'm learning a lot each time I do it. I'm just a volunteer who's doing it because I'm interested and have most of the equipment to at least get started. I think I'll stick to club games for the time being while I build the technology and skills, and hopefully that will help me avoid the trolls in the chat, most of whom probably don't understand that the whole thing was put together on a shoestring with just the equipment I already had and run by a one-man volunteer army unlike the streams that they're used to seeing with three staff and about $20,000 worth of equipment. And the team from Bowls Victoria do an awesome job with that and their commentators are fantastic. Question of the day, is there something that you'd like to try live streaming? Maybe not like this, but it can be as simple as pulling out your phone and opening the Facebook or YouTube app and hitting go live. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if this video is useful to you, give it a thumbs up. Thank you. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician, learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys, and fix it when it breaks. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's some older videos you may not have seen before, here and here. And you can subscribe to our channel by clicking here, and our mailing list by clicking up here. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the next episode.